against us again, and it's Ask the No Wall. And uh, we got one more question from Don the Eagle. Do you know something about the wall of fog that surrounds the tunnel? Great question, Don. Don is asking, I'm going to say, uh, esoteric level questions because he's very familiar with the whole uh, Tolteca path. The wall of fog is one of those events that is used to describe the separation between the first attention and the second attention. And it was also called the parallel lines, meaning that you have to move from one rail to another in order to get into the second attention. In a bigger sense, the wall of fog is a real thing. There's other metaphors like the cosmic vagina entrance pulled open that the warriors have to go through. There's metaphors about bridges of fog that they have to cross in order to get to the second attention. All of those are very creative poetic ways of explaining the unexplainable as artists, but they also are real things. So the wall of fog in my personal experience with warriors has occurred in power spots in places that has the possibility for moving from one world to the next. That's why they're power spots. Big curtains of fog would roll in and if we didn't stay together as a band of warriors, we wouldn't be able to find each other. In some cases we were lost in the fog world for the entire, we thought, night, but when we woke up or we got out of the fog, it was daylight, and we were in a location that was miles away from where we had begun. So time, space, all of that is gone in the fog world. The fog world in, in many respects is the, the place where you have to use all of your skills as a warrior in order to survive because you could be lost in there forever, you could lose members in a physical sense that would fall off a precipice, I've had to take spirit brothers and grab them, that next step would have meant their death. That land of fog is also called the land of ghosts because of all those events that have occurred to warriors in that land. So um, it's a real thing and it's a space that you have to be prepared to stay in. We decided that we would stay in the fog world one time, my core of warriors, and brought provisions to do so because we thought perhaps it would be weeks that we would be in that land and how to survive. It is also intensely cold, there is no sunlight, there is only this feeling of being lost to everything. Can you bind together? What is the, what is the love between warriors in the land of fog? That all comes up. Your body warmth is necessary. We found ourselves huddling together like a group of bison. We found that the only way that we could survive was to share all of our skills. Who actually was daring enough to go those extra steps on the non-path? Or the path that we continuously took that just brought us back to the point where we had begun. So, the wall of fog is not only a metaphor, it is a reality that that sorcerers encounter. And uh, you did answer a little bit about your benefactor earlier in this series, but uh, I'd be interested to hear more about his history and what makes him and him recognizing you important. Great. When you meet your benefactor, in this case Kacharo, he gave me his personal history introduction was saying that initially his mother was from the Mayan lineage, there was a Mongoloid, there was a Yaki, and he told me that he was named Kacharo, representing what he called the white salamander, because when his mother was going to give birth, she was by a fire, and there was a salamander, a white salamander, on a branch that fell off into the fire. Now salamanders in occult circles are always associated with the element of fire. So he gave me his entire introduction, how he was named, some of the aspects in his youth 
I've covered a few of those, even meeting unidentified flying objects. Now, his criteria for engaging me was for me to become an Nawalis, uh, an apprentice Nawal, based on everything he could pass on to me. There is a lot going on with him being associated with um, Don Vincenti Madrano, who is the herbalist in the Don Juan Matus lineage. He is also the northern man of that lineage. So when Carl says he is sealing the lineage, if we look at Cacharo as part of that particular lineage, then we can trace the history back, and that means that line is still continuing. So Cacharo, as being part of that and knowing all those herbs, is the man who actually is the healer of that group. Not from the wall, but the healer. And in that way, he has recorded everything that he can, the scholar of the group, throughout his lifetime of the medicinal plants in the Sierra Madre of Mexico going into the southern part of the United States. When I first met him, he was also involved with the art of making little pouches that he would give all the Wallace apprentices that had herbs in those. And they are beautiful art that they were passed on to all of us. When we finished our initiation with his knowledge, he also gave us power bands which have the symbols for various herbs and part of our initiation for us to wear on our wrist. And he said, with these power bands, you will be recognized wherever you go as completing your wall path. His history, to me, is the entire history of the Toltec lineage living today. There is no one else who has stepped forward on the internet or anywhere I can see who is continuing the Toltec lineage. If you want to know him, you have to go to where the Toltecs went. This is a man who opens the door to the Toltec path. And if you need to know more, if you have questions, that's what the comment section's for. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.